In a previous video, I assembled a little Vivor wind turbine to test its output at various wind speeds. Well, it fell quite a bit below its ratings at different speeds, but I was getting something, and that's still some fun-free energy. Now that I did some testing of the output of this wind turbine in various wind speeds, I'm going to make a few adjustments and I'm going to mount it on top of the barn. From the ground to the peak of this barn roof is about 23 or 24 feet high. And then I'll probably go another 6 or 7 feet with the wind turbine. So I'll place it right around maybe 30 feet off the ground. I don't want to go any higher than that because I still want to be able to have easy access to the wind turbine. You know, if I'm standing on the roof, I just want to be able to just reach it and with my hands and touch it right off the barn roof. That's why I'm not going to go up any higher. In the installation instructions for this wind turbine, it calls for a mounting height of 6 to 8 meters, which is 19.6 to 26.24 feet. So we'll be higher than this. This is what they're showing in their picture. And the barn and the house are actually built on a hill. I'm in my lab that's in the barn, my barn lab. And looking out the window, off in the distance, you can see the rest of the driveway. We're about 20 feet higher than that driveway down there that goes out to the road. And maybe 25 to 30 feet higher than the rest of this lower area around there. The window's kind of dirty. So we'll have some pretty good elevation up there. First order of business is to paint this. I just don't care for that orange colored nose cone. This is a silver reflectant. Doesn't that look better? Just a light coat on there. With my previous testing of this wind turbine, I got a pretty good idea what the output's gonna be like. So I went with a 12-3 wire for hookup. And actually that's what this wire coming out of the turbine is. This is 12 gauge wire. And I got three strands of 12 gauge wire coming out of this. This is actually just uh, an extension cord, exterior extension cord. And I'm using lever nuts to connect them. Each one of these lever nut connections is rated at 20 amps. And then I'll put some heat shrink tubing across them. And I think that should hold pretty good. And it's easy to take apart too. One other thing that I did, changing this uh, wind turbine a little bit, is I plugged up the hole that was in this blade. It was having trouble turning into the wind. So I took some aluminum tape to block that up. So maybe that will help turn it into the wind more. I don't know why that hole was there. There is a bearing on here. It just seems to be a little bit stiff. I shot some WD-40 up in there, but it didn't really help anything. Maybe it just needs some use or something and it will loosen up. We'll see. Time will tell. The prevailing winds here are mainly from the northwest. That's off towards those power poles right there. Winter time, the wind maybe a little bit more from the north, and in the summertime, a little bit more from the south. Right now, it looks like we got a little bit of a breeze from the southwest. And this is the south here. And here we have the wind turbine set up, wooden frame. Similar to what we had below, we're about maybe seven feet more off the peak. And I have the wires of the turbine tied together down below. That's why it's not spinning so much. It's a little bit of motion there, but it's mostly just grounding itself out. And it's at a height here where... I can easily get at it if I need to. My frame is very sturdy, attached to the roof. Got my wire, 
coming out the bottom like I had before. It's going into a T. My wire coming out and running down the roof. So this is the level of the turbine. It looks like we're pretty close to the level of those trees to the south and off in the distance. I think we got a pretty good location right here. House off in this direction. That's just my antenna wire. I got a few trees here to the east, but they're not higher than them. Hardly ever seen a wind from the east, so I'm not concerned at all. And in the summertime, we really don't get as much wind as we do in the wintertime. Wintertime, fall, and spring is when we get the wind, and it slows down quite a bit in the summertime. So I got kind of a cute little structure here. My wife thinks so. She says it looks like a five-pointed star, but now it's turning. I don't think my antenna pole will cause that much interference. Now I have the wire for my turbine just coming down the roof here. Temporarily, I'm just going underneath the door into my lab, and that's how I'm going to have it for now. Back in the barn lab, wire coming from under the door, over here to my bench top where I'm setting everything up. Got the air charge controller mounted to an aluminum platter, so it'll dissipate heat when it starts to regulate the charge going into the battery if it gets too much. And this charge controller calls for use on a lead acid battery. So what I have is I have a marine deep cycle battery that we'll be using in this. And it's also saying this thing will draw current from your battery when it's the wind turbine isn't putting up power. Right now I just got them tied together. I don't have it connected. And it says it draws... 3.6 milliamps. So I want to test that out right now with my meters here. Uh, that's the voltage on the battery. This will be running through this other meter. The current will be running through this other meter and set that to milliamps. Nothing right now. And I will see what we're drawing. So we're drawing 6.43 milliamps. This charge controller is drawing 6.3 milliamps just in standby mode. So we're using some power just for having it connected to the battery. So I know I heard some people complaining that it's draining their battery when there's no wind. So I guess you'd probably want a way to disconnect that if you don't have wind for a while. So now I'm going to go ahead and connect all these together. Again, I'm using these uh, Waco lever nuts. I showed these before in another video. I really like these. It's so easy to connect and disconnect. So I'm going to connect that up now and let the wind turbine loose. And with everything connected up, we're still drawing the 6.4 milliamps just for this charge controller. The problem is now I can't test the wind speed at the same time, but the voltage has risen up a little bit. We're getting a little bit of current in there. This is in amps now, half amp, 0.7 amps, And we are getting a little charge in there. I'm not sure what the wind speed is, but we're getting a little bit of charge in there. 
I can use, now that I know how much that wind turbine uses, I can use this meter because it'll go up to 10 amps and we never had over 8 amps, I think, when we were testing before in, in the higher winds even. But it's charging the battery up a little bit now. Maybe I should run up on the roof and see what the wind speed is. Well, I was going to go test the wind speed, but it looks like it's not enough to even turn it now. The ribbon is blowing a little bit over by my experimental one. I got that one shut off. But this one doesn't seem to be turning at all right now. And somebody just shot. Well, now it just started to generate a little bit again. So it is going guess I should go check the wind speed, but the time I get up there, it might have let up, but I'll make my way up there. It is going. It is pretty quiet at this low wind speed. I hear it a little bit. Well, it sure looks a lot better without that orange nose cone, I think. It's kind of cool up there. Back inside, and the battery is charging up. Some current, I've seen it over an amp there for a minute. This wind controller is supposed to supply the maximum power to the battery as it's charging. Then as the battery gets fully charged, it's supposed to start regulating the voltage so we don't overcharge it. And I think what's happening, it diverts the power into some resistance in here, and that's why this heats up. And you need some heat sink material around there to dissipate the heat. Now they call it unloading or applying the brakes. I tend to call it regulating. But anyway, that's how that's supposed to work. One point eight amps ain't too bad. I don't think this starts regulating until it gets like to fourteen volts, so it'll raise up quite a show quite a voltage on there before it starts regulating. But we are getting some close to probably thirteen watts there. I think before when I was testing it down below, we were getting thirteen watts at about ten mile an hour wind. So not much, but it's something. I have some small inverters here I'll be using to take a load off this battery when I want. Probably just for lab power. Not a whole lot there to work with, but there is something there. It's kind of fun just to play with it. Well, we are getting to a point now where it's starting to unload, reaching the maximum voltage. So it's unloading. Somewhere around 13.7 volts, it looked like it started to unload. So that part is actually working then, I guess. <clears throat> Wind has dropped down now a little bit. Um, Feels mostly cool to the touch yet though. <clears throat> I don't think it was doing that much. Well, there's not that much power coming into a mode. <laughs> there we go. This back. There you can see, I'm going to see all the gauges.
amps, voltage, and unloading. Okay, so we, it seems to be working. Charge controller seems to be working. Battery's charged, and it's starting to unload. Wind must be like 13, 15 miles per hour, I bet. Yeah, I wish I could measure the wind speed too at the same time. All the equipment appears to be working. It's just overrated for the power, but I really didn't expect that much for $100. I'm not quite sure how long these are supposed to last. It says every five years you need to replace the blades and the bearings. So we'll see how long this does last. When this one does die, I just might put a bigger real one up there. This one seems kind of like a toy one, but it is putting out some power. It's generating some power. I think Vibor just needs to have some third-party testing done. But none of the wind turbines work without the wind in a good location. And I really think testing needs to be done beforehand to see if you have enough wind to even make it practical. Because otherwise, it's, it's really not even worth it, even the cheap ones like this. I'm in northern west central Minnesota, and about 35 to 40 miles west of me, the forested area ends, and then it opens up into prairie. And that's where you'll find the big commercial wind turbines, and then all the way across the Dakotas. So I'm not in that ideal zone. But I'm close enough to where I want to do some experimenting with these things. Now, Vivor seems to be happy enough with my testing of their wind turbine. So they provided me a direct link and a discount code if you want to get one of these to play with. And you can find that stuff in the description of this video. And that will bring this video to an end. So I <laughs> thank you for your time for watching it. And I'll see you again. Cloudy day. The little Vivor wind turbine is spinning away on top of the barn, trading a couple watts. And then I have my solar array on a cloudy day putting out 307 watts. So we're still getting quite a bit of power out of these just on a cloudy day.